Welcome to this guided hallucination that is the Metropolitan GAN rendering. The specific GAN model on display was trained for about 15 GPU days and the video on screen was rendered with a smoothing of 3 seconds, a duration of 60 seconds and a truncation of 1. This will be your base video that we use as the comparison for the other parameters. As this video is a bit of a follow-up to my previous video on rendering with StyleGAN 2. In which I showed how the Flickr Faces HD model can be rendered with different parameters. I'm going to keep this space comparison video in the top left. And for comparison here we can now see how the model renders with different random seeds. In the top left we rendered with a random seed of 1. And then we have in the top right a random seed of 2. In the top left, excuse me, in the bottom left a random seed of 3. And in the bottom right a random seed of 4. We can already see that portraits apparently are more frequent for the even seats, though this might be just random, as so many things are. But this does show that it really pays off to venture into the randomness and see for yourself what you find. Now let's look at the truncation instead. In the top left we still have the basic video that we use as comparison throughout. And now we go both up and down in truncation in half steps. So in the top right there's a psi of 0.5 which is somewhat less changing. And in the bottom left we have a psi of 1.5 and in the bottom right a psi of 2. Both are much more errant, much more variant, much more colorful than the basic video in the top left. So if that's an effect you're looking for, you should play around with the truncation psi above 1. While if you're searching for something more stable, Maybe try a Psi below 1. Here we look a little bit closer at small truncation size, specifically in the range from 1 to 0 0.1. With the base comparison still in the top left on loop, we can now see in 0.3 steps down to 0.1 how the objects on screen really change less the smaller the truncation psi is. And specifically with a psi of 0.1 it really seems like there's just one average object that is changing ever so slightly while the normal video changes between statue and coin and tapestry and even a sword now or a lens, perhaps. Now let's have a look in the other direction. Here we have Psi set between 1 and 2, or 1.9, and we sample in 0.3 steps. We can see that the colors become much more vibrant, much more defined. Here the background in blue comes in much earlier. The colors bleed into the background from this shape for Psi 1.9. This gun loses some of its contour. Here we have bleeding of the sharp edges. And now here in the coin we have much more holes, much more vibrant colors in the high Psi values. Which is quite a nice effect if you ask me. And it's only up to your imagination what you can do with it. Now we look at the smoothing parameter. 
In the top left is still the comparison video looping all throughout. Here the smoothing is set to 3 seconds which leads to a slow and steady changing of the artifacts. And we can see the lower the smoothing value is set, the faster our objects morph between each other. Well, we have a very steady slow morph with all the transitions visible for a smoothing of three seconds we have but flashes of different artifacts for a smoothing of 0.5 seconds and we can barely make out all the different artifacts that morph into each other in this whirlwind of colors now let's look at a comparison between StyleGen 2 and its predecessor StyleGen 1 with a characteristic blob artifact in the center bottom left that disappears now just in order to reappear on the right side of the face and now it appears at the bottom of the vase it's quite obvious if you know what to look for and in fact, it was one of the reasons why StyleGen 2 was developed. As we can see in the top, there's no more blob artifacts. For better or worse, if you found them aesthetically pleasing. You can also see here the effect of noise on the rendering. On the right side, we have injected noise into the same video that was rendered on the left. And we can see an erratic flickering between the morphing images. And finally, here's some more renders in a comparison between StyleGen 2 and StyleGen 1. Unfortunately, I can't synchronize the random seats across models since these were completely differently trained. But it still gives a nice sample of possible artifacts that both models can render. If you enjoyed this video, as always, like and subscribe. And also I'm going to upload both my models for StyleGen 2 and StyleGen 1 for this Metropolitan dataset. Also, if you enjoyed the music, the sound is called Joydive by Muggles. And I will leave a link to the SoundCloud in the description. Have a nice day.